Hello gamers and welcome back to the Rules of Fun and have I got a brand new and pretty obscure game for you guys this time. The game is called Card Dominant. I'd never heard of it before. It's only come out in 2017 and I have actually been given a copy of the game from my local game store to review and check out and play with a few of my friends, which I have done and I can tell you that it is a fantasy style tactical game a la Magic the Gathering but so much more uh, quick and fun um, and easier to explain to your friends. So let's get into the game and see what makes it up. Now the game itself is super simple, there are not a lot of parts to it. You can play a game in about 20-25 minutes and it'll be over. You can have up to four players uh, playing at the same time and interestingly um, the decks are identical that you get so you can get another deck and have eight players playing at the same time You can just keep on going up and up and up, but check out this rule book. Look at this tiny little thing That is how easy it is going to be for you to pick up the rules and play with players who have never played before And that's the good thing about this game It's for people that don't necessarily know stuff like Magic the Gathering um, or that really in-depth fantasy style stuff, but for anyone that does play Magic the Gathering or have any experience with that, it's going to be even easier. Half this rule book you won't even need. So let's have a look at the setup. Now the setup of the game is pretty simple. Each player is going to have five cards and the idea is to set them up into a front line and a reserves, okay? Basically the, the cards that will attack your opponent come from your front line unless they have a special ability like the archer who's able to shoot people in the enemy's reserve line. Um, the mage, for instance, can attack the enemy front line, but he can do it from the rear. All those sorts of things you'll find out as you go through the rules. But basically, your front line is the one that's going to attack and be attacked, and the ones you want to keep defended will go into your back line. Now, before we go any further, let's look at the cards themselves, because they are pretty good, especially when we're talking about how easy this game is to learn. Things that will be familiar to anyone who sees uh, cards in board games or magic or anything like that will be your attack score and your defense score. Okay, so each card will have an attack score on the top left and a defensive score on the top right. It'll tell you what sort of character you've got on the card, whether it's a warrior, a healer, or a witch, and it will tell you a special ability from the bottom of the card. Now, most of them will simply say something like, the warrior can attack from the front line only, which is most people. But you can see the archer can attack units in the front line or the back line, it is up to them. Um, Healers, again, attack from the front line only. Mage can attack from the front or the back line, and the Witch can attack from the front or the back line. Now again, I love the simplicity of this game because the stuff's all written there on the cards for you, and there's no super complicated special abilities. That is it. The other thing that's great about these cards is when you use them, they are double-sided. Each person in your deck can make an attack or cast a spell or do something like that, and when it does, you flip them over. You get this black and white version which says, I've used this character, I cannot use them for the rest of this round. You flip them back over. Also good for your opponents to see who they're going to attack and all that, all that wonderful stuff. So how does the game work? Well, the setup goes something like this. Each player gets the five cards in front of them, set up into their front row and their reserves. These cards are called ability cards, the ones without characters on them, and they say things like protect or power or massive strike and things like that. They go face down in the middle of the board. And you also find a bunch of summoned creatures. So skeletons, imps, guardians, things like that. Now they go to a pile in the middle of the board as well, so they're available for people to grab if they cast one of these summoned creatures into their army. How does a round start? Well, you figure out who goes first, scissors, paper, rock, toss a coin, whatever it is that you want to do. And once you have done that, the first thing that the players do is they all go to the center deck with the abilities and they draw three cards. Once everyone's got their three cards, you start with the player who's gone first and they have a series of things that they can do. First things first, they can rearrange their lines. So they can put the mage at the front, the warrior at the back, the archer over here, however they want to do it. Remember that the front line is the one that's going to bear the brunt of your opponent's attacks. So whoever's in the front is going to be, you're going to want to have all the defense or all the offensive skills so that you can attack your opponents with them. What you do after you have organized your lines the way that you feel like is you pick one of these ability cards and you place them on one of your warriors. So if I've got this card which says pressing attack, warrior or archer, 
Chosen enemy units may not act this round. I can place that on an opponent's warrior or archer, and that means that they are not going to be able to attack this round. Once I place one of these cards, it goes to the opponent's turn. They will play one card after rearranging their lines if they need to. Perhaps they want to put that warrior that can't attack now in the back lines. Once they've sorted out their lines, they too will pick one ability card that they have just drawn and they will play it either on their own cards or on their opponent's cards like we did before. We'll go through these ability cards until we have used them all up, going back and forth using our summoned creatures, our curses, our powers, our boosters whatever we have, and then the round will begin proper with the attacks and the defense. Now the person whose turn it is will be the first one to attack. They will pick one or more of the units that can attack an enemy card, and they will declare that they are all attacking the witch, for instance. So I need to, with all the offensive power of the cards that I am using, I need to match or exceed the defense of the card I am attacking. If I do that, then the card I am attacking is killed, it goes out of the pile and gets discarded. Meanwhile, all the cards that I used in the attack get flipped over and they can't do anything for the rest of this round. Once the attack is finished, having targeted and killed one of the enemy cards on the table, it is the other player's turn. They will then use one or a combination of their cards to attack the player that attacked them. If there's three or more players, then it becomes a little bit more tactical as to who you're going to attack and who you're going to maybe buddy up with for the round. This goes back and forth until the players cannot do any more moves. Either all of their characters have been turned over to the black side, or it is their turn but they can see that all of their combined attack power can't actually defeat any of the enemy's defensive power, and then they just pass the turn and the round is over. Once the round is over, play repeats itself, with players again taking three ability cards from the center pile, rearranging their lines, placing these ability cards and attacking their opponent. The thing that changes is whose turn it is first. Now, the first player of each round moves around the table anti-clockwise. So if there's two players, you will take turns having the first turn of the round. If there's three or four players, then that will move around the table clockwise, and that's about it. You will fight each other until the game is done, one player emerging victorious having destroyed all of their opponents. The trickiest thing to remember about this game, and again, it's not tricky at all, it's a really simple game, is the position of your cards. Now, in order to have a back row, you must have two cards in front of it. So, you cannot just decide to have one card in the front row and two cards in the rear. And so there will always be more cards in the front row than in the reserves. It's pretty much as simple as that. So say one of your front row characters is slain. You take them off to the side and suddenly you've got two cards in the front, two cards in the back. Well, that is not two cards in the front to every one that is behind it. Think of it like two muscly people standing in defense of the person behind them. You need two in the front and one at the back. So the first thing that you have to do before your turn even starts is to rearrange your deck once again. So you move up one of your cards so that you've got three in the front. Now that means there's two for the one behind and an extra at the front, which is okay. The only time you can really get away with not having a back line is if you lose enough cards that you can no longer have one person in reserve, you've got say two cards left, and they will both be in the front line. And basically, that's it. That's the whole game. We've just gone through all of the rules and there's nothing more really to say about it. Um, it sounds really, really simple, but it's when you add the elements of how you position your cards and the abilities cards, when you really can stack on the defense, the attack, um, summon extra creatures and things, it does get very tactical as to how you want to play this game, as well as when there are more players especially if there's two decks and there's like eight players, it becomes very, very important as to who you're attacking and when you make your move, which makes the game really, really replayable as well as simple to learn. So why should you play this game? Well, like I said, this is a very simple version of like other fantasy card games like Magic the Gathering. So if you can't find players that want to play Magic the Gathering with you, if you're an avid player, but you just can't find enough people willing to learn all the intricacies of the rule, this will be a great starter drug for them. It's very simple, it's very fair. You don't have to collect the deck and, and get all sorts of different cards. Everyone starts the same every single game and you get the idea of attacking enemy cards and them attacking you and 
deciding on the tactics involved there. The other thing is, if you're a magic player or a fantasy or a board game player and you want something that's easy to travel with, you could just chuck this in a bag and wherever you end up, you can find a table that doesn't need a board and start playing a game that'll go for 20, 25 minutes. This is the game for you. Now, I took this game down to Melbourne when I went to visit my brother and we actually played this game for the first time after a nine hour drive. Myself, my brother and my fiance sitting around a table, very tired and Honestly, the fact that we managed to play the game after that many hours in the car was amazing in itself, and that's how easy it was to learn. Now, my brother's cynical about everything, basically, and he looked at the box and he was like, look at the stupid little blurb on the box, you know, it says, uh, it's a fast-paced game that takes minutes to learn and weeks to master. Um, what a lame tagline. And you know what? Um, five minutes later, the game was fast-paced and easy to learn and it shows a lot of tactics that would take weeks and weeks to master it so it is exactly what is on the box so as as he was uh, taking the mickey out of the game it, it proved to be everything that it said on the box the turns are quick you're not sitting around waiting for ages for your opponent to go um, it's easy to understand. My fiance is not big on fantasy games and tactical games at all. Uh, ones where you count up defense and attack and she enjoyed it. And the fact that you can keep adding to the decks is just, it's kind of amazing. I don't know how people come up with these ideas that you can add, you can double the amount of players and it doesn't break the game or make the game take forever to get through. Um, which is really, really fascinating to me. So it's quick and easy and it's also flexible, which boggles my mind. You can have people turn up to your house for a game night and they've brought two friends which you weren't expecting and it doesn't matter. Your four player game easily becomes a six player game and just get on with it. So there you go, that was Card Dominant. A strange name for a strange game that actually was a bit of a dark horse and pretty entertaining to play. Like I said, it's a brand new game, 2017, I think it was the first release. So check out the link below to find out where you can get it from if this sounds like the game for you. Otherwise, I will see you next time and happy gaming.